Hello everyone, this is Scarzig, and welcome to the Magmar section of my Shimzar set review. Um, hopping right in, I do want to go over quickly the changes that went on to some Magmar cards. They reworked the way the rebirth mechanic functions in that your eggs will always hatch at the beginning of your turn, not the end. And the minions that hatch out of those eggs will be able to move. They'll essentially have rush. So when things hatch out of eggs, you're able to act immediately with them. And because of that change, they had to make some additional changes to other cards. And so we'll go over those really quickly. Um, right here we can see uh, Silithar Elder was nerfed from an 8-8 to a 6-6. And this is because, again, um, Silithar Elder spawns an egg at the end of your, at the end of your turn. If your opponent can't clear the Elder, the egg the Elder leaves behind, and the egg that it spawned, then it's going to hatch, and then the Elder that already hatched has Rush. So, Silithar Elder is a lot more snowball-y than it used to be. It still does the same thing, where you'll just keep massively generating them if your opponent doesn't deal with it immediately. But because those Elders have Rush, um, it's less going to be... Um, it's it's kind of hard to explain where Silithar Elders are already really strong. And so them being able to act immediately, you getting a fresh Elder every turn that, that is able to move is really overbearing on the opponent. So it still does the same thing if your opponent can't answer it. But because of the um, buff to eggs, they had to make Silithar Elder weaker. A lot of people are saying, oh, you know, Silithar Elder is useless now, etc., etc. But Silithar Elder has always been, if, um, if I have the time to play it, then I'm going to play it. If my opponent can't answer it, I essentially win. And if, you know what I mean? And even if I don't have time to play it, I might just throw it out there. And if my opponent can't answer it, it I might win. So Silithar Elder has always been either way too good or useless. And... The Magmar decks adjust accordingly. It's just they they just nerfed its stats so that the power level is more in line with the way the rebirth mechanic works now. So the, it's like the card itself hasn't really been changed. So we'll see this come and go as the meta shifts, like it always has. Um, next, just to quickly touch on this. Um, actually, I should I should go over uh, Veteran Silithar first for for pacing. Uh, Veteran Silithar was nerfed from a four five to a 4-3, and because, again, it is allowed to act as soon as it hatches, um, what this does, it, this does two things. Making it a 4-3 makes it easier for the veteran Silithar to be killed on your turn so that um, you can take advantage of the egg with other um, minions and things that hatch the eggs so that you can use it again and double dip into that. The other thing as well, if Veteran Silithar remained a 4-5 with the way Rebirth works, it would be absolutely ridiculous at 4 mana. They would either have to nerf its stats or increase its mana costs. Um, one of the things I don't like about this change, however, is that it makes Veteran Silithar really, really bad if you summon it with Flash Reincarnation. So if they increased the mana cost to like 5 or 6 and then still allowed you to pull out a 4-3, then that could work. The other problem with that, though, is that once it hatches from that egg, if it gets a chance to hatch, then it will just be um, brought back up to its original HP. So I think that that is why the developers were forced to make this into a 4-3, so that it doesn't have such a high max HP that gets refilled every time you don't have a way to deal with the egg. Um, so Veteran Silithar isn't as um, overbearing and ubiquitous, and it was like basically the best 4-drop in the game for a while, best Magmar 4-drop before Earth Sister came out. And so now, you know, we're getting a lot of heat um, with Veteran Silithar being nerfed. But the thing is, is Earth Sister forced Veteran Silithar out of Magmar decks anyway. I think a lot of the negative feelings about this change comes from players who were expecting to abuse this thing with the rebirth change and now they don't get to do that as strongly but a four five a four six almost a four that for four mana that 
if you didn't kill it completely and the body that it left behind, you got it back for free and it could act again at the beginning of your turn, was it would be really overbearing and really nuts because you would drop a veteran Silithar on four mana and then it's not dealt with and then you drop a second one on five mana just because and then if and then you have two bodies that you need to fully clear and deal with or else they'll keep healing themselves and coming at you it would just generate way too much value so this nerf was definitely needed um and so just to back up real quick earth sister was nerfed down to four hp which was a necessary nerf i do want to stand by their choice to do this nerf because i was one of the people who was talking about how earth sister was too strong and I got into plenty of arguments and debates about it, and it probably deserves its own video talking about why Earth Sister was like ridiculous the way it was. And 3-4 is just a slight touch. It still does all the things it used to do. It's just slightly easier for your opponent to deal with it now, and that's really good for the game. So again, maybe it'll get its own video where I talk about it in depth, but we don't want to get hung up on those changes. We want to talk about the new set. So coming out here, we've got Dreadnought, which is a 4-6 for 6. It itself has Rebirth, um, so when it dies, it'll turn into an egg. Egg minions you summon gain plus 2, plus 2. And I unfortunately had not been able to test um, whether or not Dreadnought makes its own egg into a 2-4, um, because the servers crashed like right after the set was released. Um, so if that's the case... That makes Dreadnought a more, uh, a much more viable pick. I don't think it works that way because that would be pretty, pretty strong if this thing's particular egg was stronger than normal. But if you have two Dreadnoughts on board, then, you know, it becomes really, really hard to clear both of them. Um, I can tell from the way they changed Rebirth that Magmar is a more snowball-y faction. They want to get those early things out there that you're unable to deal with and they just spiral out of control which is not what a lot of people like from the faction um but like this rebirth change the presence of dreadnought and grow you know makes magmar that snowbally spiral out of control faction um last reincarnation to bring out a 4-4 four, four, um with rebirth this is much more in line with old veteran silithar but i think that the the st the stats for its cost are a bit much and you aren't going to make use of its effect to buff your eggs as much as you want anyway it just makes your eggs harder to remove and at six mana that late into the game if you have stuff with rebirth that's sticking to the board you're most likely winning anyway so dreadnought is a bit redundant so it's probably not going to see play but it has probably the sweetest um, minion design out of anything else in this faction. It's really sick. Um, so we do have the Magmar Battle Pet Rex, which is a 3-1 with Rebirth. It's going to move an attack by itself, so it's going to trade into something and become an egg right at the start of your turn. And so if you're able to combo this with something that hatches eggs, you can double dip into that 3 attack. But... Other than that, it's just going to be like um, Maw used to be a 2-mana 3-1. It's just a really strong body that trades up into things. So it's probably not going to be that worth it unless you're running like a really battle pet-centric deck. And every faction has a little bit of support for battle pet-based decks. And so this will just be a good addition to that. Um, so here we have Wild and Scepter which is a 4-mana 3-3 with the opening gambit to hatch a friendly egg. And this is going to, be, going to be the engine for those rebirth decks where you're able to double dip into hatching your eggs, having the thing come back with rush, and to attack again. If your opponent has an artifact equipped, say, and you run your veteran Silithar into them, and then it becomes an egg, then you drop the Wild and Scepter to uh, hit them again. You're taking two damage off of the artifact, two, excuse me, two charges off of the artifact, and you're also hitting them for eight damage, which is kind of nice, I guess. You can also throw out, you know, Wild and Scepter to combo with anything with Rebirth. I think that they probably could have been a bit more generous with um, 
you know, with Rebirth as a mechanic overall, but I think that they did the right thing taking a more cautious route because making something heal itself and gain brush if it's not immediately dealt with is even when you say it out loud like that you kind of know that it's going to be really strong and kind of problematic so we'll see how this goes wild and scepter at the very least might be able to allow you to play a chrysalis burst and then hatch the one thing that you really really want to keep just to completely avoid your opponent being able to deal with it next up we have flaming stampede which is an eight mana deal 5 damage to all non-egg minions and generals. So this deals 5 mana to ev excuse me, 5 damage to everything that is not an egg. So this probably isn't going to be as useful in the Magmar Mirror, but this is essentially going to be a late game uh, board clear for Magmar. The key here is that if Flaming Stampede hits your own minions, it's just going to turn them into eggs so if they're already eggs they won't die and if you cast flaming stampede all of your rebirth minions will just turn into eggs essentially and then your opponent's left with pretty much no board most of the time and so they'll have a hard time dealing with your eggs and then when they end their turn whatever's left over is going to rehatch have full hp with rush so flaming stampede is kind of good although i think that it might be unnecessary unless again we see control magmar make a comeback um so coming up here we've got grow which is the other magmar battle pet it's a two mana two four with grow plus one plus one and i actually really like this card even though you can't control it the fact that you can drop this turn one your opponent most likely won't be able to deal with a two four because most turn two answers to a two drop are going to be like a phoenix fire or saber spine tiger or um demonic lore into general attack like those really really common turn two answers to your opponent's turn one tempo don't work on grow because it's a two four so the chances of this thing sticking around to actually start gaining stats is really really high um Normally, Grow minions, you want them to kind of play right on the edge of where the fight is so that they have a chance to get their stats. And so Grow being right in the thick of things through its Battle Pet AI might not allow it to, you know, it's not going to grow huge and spiral out of control. But every time your opponent can't finish it, it's going to do more damage. It's going to heal itself for 1 HP. So Grow is really, really solid in my opinion. Comboed with other cards in the faction, it's going to be great. Like Maloki Huntress. Grow, it itself has Grow, plus 1, plus 1, which is a thing that you should note. Friendly minions grow at the start of both players' turns. So now you see we have some synergy going because you drop Maloki Huntress and Grow at 5 mana. You end your turn, Grow automatically becomes a 3-5. Maloki Huntress is automatically going to become a 2-3 because of its effect. And then, you know, they end their turn, you start your turn, Grow gets plus 1, plus 1. Maloki Huntress gets plus, plus, plus 1, plus 1. Whatever else is in play with Grow is going to double those stat gains. The problem with Grow minions is that even though they were really solid and they could spiral out of control on you, they were still too slow like they were over costed for their base stats because of their effect but grow took too long to come online and so maloki huntress doubling the rate at which minions grow is going to allow you to take advantage of that the key here when we're talking about grow minions um, is that your opponent is grow minions are really really weak to dispel so the key with grow minions is not only to just throw them out willy-nilly you have to make sure you're baiting your opponent's removals onto the correct targets and then as soon as you drop something with grow that they can no longer deal with it's just going to get enormous and just steamroll through their whole whatever they have on the board at least that's the dream uh, so here we have lava lance which was a spell that was spoiled of course this was one of the first if not the first magmar shimzar card that was spoiled um, it's a one mana deal two damage to a minion if you have an egg deal four damage instead so we're seeing a lot of these um conditional cards i think that magmar having the ability to deal two damage to something for one mana is 
exactly what they need because dealing with like for example ranged minions um with you know like jaxi and heart seekers and stuff was a little bit difficult for magmar because they were they would um their only like really good removal was egg morph right or just hitting it with something that's really strong um ranged removal is what they really struggled with um so lava lance kind of gives them that um if you have an egg, it's kind of problematic because it's harder to set up because eggs aren't on the field as long. So you would have to attack with something, it becomes an egg, and then Lava Lance comes into play. Like this is really good with Rex, I guess, because Rex is such low HP. Um, you, you play it and it doesn't die, and then it becomes an egg next turn, pretty much guaranteed, because it's going to suicide into whatever is in range of it. And then your Lava Lance will come online. This thing doesn't hit face, of course. This is just for dealing with ranged threats. So dealing two damage for one mana is going to be the most common occurrence of Lava Lance, of course. Probably 95% of the time, Lava Lance is only going to be dealing two damage. And so this is a really good early answer to um, Pyromancers, Heartseekers, Jaxies, that kind of thing that Magmarsh historically struggles with and forced them to run blood tier alchemist all the time to combo with egg morph so if you were forced to use your blood tier alchemist to deal with range threats then you didn't have your blood tier alchemists on hand to kill the egg that you created with egg morph to, for removing your opponent's really big threats so lava lance kind of fills that niche it's almost like they gave them a worse chromatic cold um in case you didn't know fun fact um, Vanar spell chromatic cold dispel something and deal two damage to it was actually originally that effect existed in the magmar faction as mana burn they used to have that card and it was really ridiculous so lava lance kind of gives them a little bit of that back a cheap early versatile answer to stuff at the very least you can deal two damage to something for one mana and then finish it off with something else um, so coming up next, we've got Mandrake, which is a 12 mana 6-6. Six, six. Um, now this is a really fun effect. It costs one less for each minion summoned from any player's action bar this game. Now here's the thing about Mandrake, is this card is terrible. If you can crunch the numbers all day, this card is absolutely butt. This card is trash. Probably the worst card in the set, I have to say. Um... First off, the only way for this for Mandrake to be worth it is if it costs like four or five. That's like the basic like mana stat mana to stat line that you're gonna be getting to have like even value from Mandrake. But what you want is for this thing to get down to like two or three mana, right? So it's actually worth casting. And then you might be able to drop two or three of these in a row. Um, the thing about Mandrake, though, is that because its base mana is 12, it's not going to get down to low enough to bother casting fast enough. You want Mandrake to come into play in the early mid game when a 6 6 is like a really big threat, but it's not possible to summon that many minions. Um, Mandrake only works on things that are summoned from the action bar. It's not going to work on Wraithlings and all the stuff that's summoned from Dying Wish, things that are spawned through any other effect. Only minions that are strictly played from the action bar. And so it's just, it's not going to come into play fast enough. If you have the ideal scenario of player one plays one minion, player two moves forward and plays double two drop, so that's three. And then player one takes their turn again, and then they play two minions, right? And so then, you know, that's still only five. And then player two goes, plays one big thing. And then, oh, it's your turn again. And then Mandrake um, has seven mana discount, and it costs five, and it's a five mana six six. That's still only even value. That's about right when you want it to come into play is around that turn and you're only getting slightly above average value. It's only slightly better than a Hailstone Golem. And and Hailstone Golem is a 4-6 four, for 4. So it's not even better than a Hailstone Golem in most situations. So Mandrake is terrible, and you don't even want to use Flash Reincarnation on it. It just doesn't do what it wants to do. If it had a lower base mana, like... 
maybe nine, like eight or nine, this, I could jive with that, but 12 is way too high. Its effect is not going to proc the way you want it to. And it's so bad. Like, it hurts to look at it because even against swarm decks where you think that this thing would just counter them, right? You're playing a bunch of small stuff and then Mandrake just comes online for free, like at one or two mana, like super early. But because, again, it only procs on things that come from the action bar, it's... It, it all the swarm decks like Abyssian. Like if you're up against Swarm Abyssian, which you think would be the ideal matchup, Gloom Chasers and Wraithling Swarm generate bodies in other ways. Jaxie's Dying Wish generates things in other ways. Um, Dream Gazer technically isn't played from the action bar, I'm pretty sure. So Mandrake just can't do what it wants to do. Morin Kerr. This was the five mana magmar artifact that was revealed by zooch and he wrote a little article about its implications for the meta and its possible uses so i'm not going to go into too much detail because i'm pretty sure everybody who's anybody has probably already read that article i just want to say that more incur isn't going to be like ridiculous in shaping the meta it's going to be like silithar elder and it's just going to fade in and out of the meta depending on how good rebirth magmar is because i have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be focusing on the tried and true aggro magmar for now so i think it's going to be a while before more Kerr is like cracked if you'll excuse my egg pun and brought into the meta we'll have to see a lot of dedicated magmar mains of course are going to be experimenting with this card and i look forward to seeing what they come up with next up we have nature's confluence which is a five mana um, summon four copies of a random battle pet in a 2x2 two two area. And again, random battle pet means your faction's battle pets and one of the six token uh, battle pets. So Nature's Confluence is... Somebody's going to have to crunch, to crunch the numbers on this. You're either going to get like four Yuns, which is probably the best case scenario, or four one ones that draw you cards when they die. And for five mana, you want something like Yun. You want something that's going to be like really threatening. And so I think that, especially if, if you have to catch, cast uh, Nature's Confluence while you're behind, you can't, you can't leave it up to chance like that because a lot of the token minions are really good, but I think that the bad results are so bad that Nature's Confluence isn't going to be worth running. Um, you're... This is this is a card that's, you know, it supports swarmy battle pet decks, which is what every faction sort of has a little bit of synergy with, a little bit of support for. But this isn't going to be seen outside of that because the the chance of it getting like a really bad result is just going to lose you the game. And so here we have another card that um, synergizes with swarmy battle pet stuff. Razor Skin, give all friendly minions plus one attack, put a random battle pet, into your action bar. This is this can be compared with Fighting Spirit and Lion Art or War Surge almost, except it's offensive. If you already have that swarm online, you give everything plus one, and then it replaces itself. You draw a card, and then you can just replace that battle pet if you want, or if you get something good, you summon it to the field. Unfortunately, the, the pet that you get isn't going to benefit benefit from Razor Skin. And generally speaking, Magmar isn't exactly the faction that's going to be swarming you. So we'll have to see if Battle Pet becomes a thing, but overall Razor Skin is not going to see play. Um, coming up here, we've got Thumping Wave, which is one of the more interesting cards for the Magmar faction from this set. It's a 3-mana spell that gives a minion plus 5 attack. At the end of the turn, you transform it into a 3-3 three, three Kin. So this is actually really, really good in my opinion. Um, Magmar has like you know greater fortitude to get extra value out of their minions, but giving something plus five is nuts because you get that burst right off, and then at the end of your turn, it transforms into a three three kin. And kin is a vanilla three three battle pet, so it becomes a three three with battle pet AI that you can no longer control. But the thing is, is that changing something into a 3-3 might act as like a pseudo heal in most cases. And then 
your opponent still needs to deal with that 3-3. Three, three. Um, if you're comboing this with like an Elucidator or something, then you get your your 10 damage burst, and then instead of leaving behind a big body that your opponent needs to deal with, it leaves behind, you know, a 3-3, three, three, which your opponent still needs to deal with. And I think that Thumping Wave is really good also because it has the utility of being able to transform one of your opponent's really huge threats into a 3-3 battle pet at the end of your turn. So Thumping Wave, really, really solid card in my opinion. Um, and, so, and here, finally, we've got uh, Vision R, which was the one of the cards that I was most excited for, for Magmar, because I wanted to try a Starhorn draw deck. Um, the thing about Vision R, though, is that it's a 5-mana 6-3 that gets plus 1, plus 1 when any, whenever any player draws a card. And the problem with Vision R is that one, it needs to not get dispelled, and it needs to stick around. Those two problems. And three, a lot of effects that, you know, unless you're unless those battle pet draw card things are going to be coming into the meta, the problem is that cards like that at a battle random battle pet to your hand don't count as a draw. Sworn Sister Lakian doesn't count as a draw. It just generates two cards and put them in and puts them in your hand. Drawing a card is when cards literally come from your deck and come into your hand at the end of your turn or from Blazehound or Seeking Eye or Void Hunter or something like that. Actual actual draw a card stated as part of the card's effect. Any other type of wording or other effect that's generating stuff like even... There's so many cards too that they added in this faction that generate cards but don't actually technically draw them. So Vision R, even though it's kind of good, it's like it doesn't have the support that it needs. And at five mana, you can't properly combo it with um, with the additional draw effects like you normally would because you'd have to wait till six mana to summon this, and then Star Seeker, Seeking Eye. I mean. And then it's then it's a seven four. It's a it's a six mana seven four. And then you end your turn, and then draw and then you draw a card when you end your turn, and then it becomes an eight five, which is kind of decent. But like I said, it's just a vanilla body that just gr like becomes stronger and stronger if your opponent's not able to deal with it. But it's just really weak to dispel. Um, I would like to see Vision R maybe have a lower base mana just to see like where where they go from here um i know that counterplay isn't going to be doing any serious nerfs or buffs because um they got to see how the meta shapes up now that everybody has the shimzar expansion and we're going to be having thousands and thousands of test games and i think that magmar might get some slight buffs here and there the thing is is that they didn't get a lot of new like crazy stuff in the Shimsar set the way other factions did. They just got more support for their existing tools that are already strong. Magmar is already really good. They just didn't get anything extra on top of that. So um, at the very least, we have Grow, which is a really decent two drop for Magmar. Lava Lance might help in a pinch. And, you know, Morin Kerr might bring some control nuts stuff to... Um, Magmar if you combo Morinker with egg, with Chrysalis Burst. So that's it for the Magmar video and thank you for joining me and I will see you at the next video. Yeah.